Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for making my A Day in the Life of a Quant video hit 20,000 views and making my How I Became a Quant video hit 5,000 views. As many of you have requested, you would like to hear some advice on picking the right MFE program. So in today's video, I'm going to share my personal experience on how I got to learn about the MFE programs and how I made my own decision. Before I start today's video, I just want to emphasize two things. The first thing is that I'm going to talk about my personal experience for about 70% of this video. I'm just speaking on behalf of myself and I just want to share my data point as a reference. This doesn't mean that anyone should follow my exact path. The second thing is that I know some of you who are watching this video are either applying for MFE programs or have attended MFE programs. So please feel free to leave comments down below if you would like to share your own experience. Without further ado, let us start today's video. So the video will be split into two parts. The first part will be based off my personal experience. I will cover how I got to know about MFE programs and the research I did to make up my final decision. For those of you who haven't watched my previous video, the program that I chose in the end is the Carnegie Mellon University's Computational Finance Program. And the second part of this video will be more general and I want to make some recommendations for the two groups of people who are watching my video. Okay, let's start off from part one. I got to know about the financial engineering program when I was doing an internship during my junior year in college. My roommate happened to be attending an MFE program back then, and he was doing an internship as a quantitative researcher. So thanks to him, I got to know about the work he was doing, the program he attended, as well as hearing his advice on starting a quant career. Back then, I knew that I wanted to complete a higher degree after I finished my undergrad. I was thinking about doing a PhD program, either in math or economics. However, because I was an economics major, I also understood the opportunity cost of completing a PhD degree. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't get a PhD degree. Actually, two of my best friends, they are doing their PhDs right now and I think so highly of them. But from my personal standpoint, I knew that I wanted industry experience. I wanted to find a job and make money on my own as soon as possible. And I also knew back then that I don't have the perseverance to complete a five to six year PhD program. So I decided to pursue a master's degree instead of a PhD degree. Again, this depends on your own aspiration, your own goal, whether you're more into industry or academic. After I made up my mind, I started doing research. I listed down a few things that I find really important to me when I was choosing the program. So the first thing is academic rigor. The second thing is alumni connection. The third thing is lens of program. The fourth is ranking and reputation. Fifth, location. Six, cost. Seven, application timeline. And eight, program size. This is in a ranked order and I will break them down one by one. The thing that I cared about the most was academic rigor. Personally, I really enjoyed learning from the best and brightest professors. Why waste time attending a program that doesn't teach you anything new or doesn't challenge you in any ways? Prior to attending the MFE program, I knew that I wanted to gain more knowledge about the financial industry as well as enhance my coding skills. So I wanted the program to have well-rounded courses to help me achieve that. So I went to each school's program website to take a look at what kind of courses they offer and see if those courses are relevant and are helpful. The second thing that I cared about was alumni connection. Financial industry actually requires a lot of networking. Of course, you can still get a job without doing too much networking, but having good people connection can actually help you get better jobs. Your alumni are more likely to vouch for you and submit a referral for you. And because they attended the same program as you did, they understand the rigor of the program. And they will trust your ability, which will make the referral part even easier. And of course, maybe one day your alumni happens to be reviewing your resume during the resume round. And guess what? When he or she has two candidates placed in front of them, one candidate is you who graduated from the same program as they did, the second candidate coming from a program that they haven't heard of. Whose resume do you think they might pick? Usually when I am reviewing the resumes, I tend to take a closer look at my alumni's resume. Number three, lens of program. Usually MFE programs have three types of lens. The first type is one year program. For example, MIT's Master of Finance program, Berkeley's Master of Financial Engineering program. The second type is one and a half years, such as Baruch's Financial Engineering program and Carnegie Mellon University's Computational Finance program. The last type is a two year program, 
for example, the New York University's Mathematics in Finance program. For me, I preferred the one and a half years program because I wanted to do a summer internship in between semester two and semester three. Having a summer in between the program actually gave you more flexibility to look for not only the summer internship, but also your full-time opportunity. I also wanted an extra semester so I can take more courses. If you already have work experience in the financial industry or you already have solid background in finance, statistics, coding, maybe a one-year program is more suitable for you. However, if you prefer more training or longer time to look for jobs or you just enjoy studying, then you can take the two-year program. Number four, ranking and reputation. As a traditional Asian kid, I still care about ranking, so do my sponsors. The ranking that I looked at was from Quantnet, which according to them is the most authoritative and comprehensive ranking for MFE programs. Let's take a look together. So here is their website. They have the ranking for each individual program. They have total score, peer assessment, employment rate at graduation, employment rate three months after graduation, average starting base salary plus sign-on bonus, tuition and cohort size. Take Baruch College as an example, we can see that the program name is Financial Engineering Program and they are located in New York City. They actually have a full score of 100 with peer assessment of 4.1. We can also see that employment rate at graduation is 100%, meaning that they have really good support from the career service and their students are also doing a really good job finding jobs. The average starting base salary is 152k. You can also see the tuition. And the cohort size is only 24 people for full-time students. What I like about this table is that you can see different components that made up the total score. You can also click on each individual program so that can direct you into their program's website. Once you click on the program, you can also see what previous alumni commented about their experience. I find that super helpful because those are real data points. You can see what they're currently doing. You can hear about their own aspects of the programs that they attended. And this table also covered the other three things that I also cared about, which was location, cost, and program size. So for me, location was pretty important because I wanted to be able to get closer to the companies that I will be interviewing at. For on-sites or super days, you need to travel to the company and do the interviews in person. If you live pretty far away, you can still manage to do that, but you would have to waste a lot of time going back and forth. And you're not only just interviewing for companies, you're also completing a pretty rigorous course, which will also take away your time. I also cared about the cost. These programs are very costly, so I think it's necessary to understand how much money you need to put into it first before you get rewarded from your future jobs. I also cared about program size. For me, I kind of preferred a medium-sized cohort because I wanted to attend classes with a smaller size, but I also wanted to get to know as many talented classmates as possible. And the last thing that I looked at was timeline. Some of these programs also have early application rounds, so that you can apply earlier and hear back from them earlier. Berkeley kind of stands out because they start their program in spring. And normally their students would do an internship during the winter break. And for some of these programs, you can even attend part-time. Now we'll start the second part of this video. Based on the age breakdown of the people who have watched my previous videos, I would like to provide tips for two groups of people. The first group of people are current undergraduates who are thinking about their future career paths. And the second group of people are professionals who are thinking about transitioning into a different career. For the first group of people, when you're choosing the right MFE program, I would like you to think about how much passion you have for the financial industry and for a quant career. Please, please, please don't blindly follow your classmates who are choosing this path and try to ask yourself whether this is what you enjoy doing. Once you make up your decisions, start applying for relevant internships as well as talking to people who are already working as a quant. The more you hear about different people's previous experiences, the more information you will have when making the decision. I'm also thinking about filming a video about the application process for MFE programs. Please leave a comment if you're interested. I find it very helpful, at least for myself, to write a list to see what are the things that I personally care about. So the eight things that I previously mentioned are just for reference. You can add more things or delete some items from that list. 
For the second group of people, I know that you're already working in the industry, so you already have a good understanding of what you're getting yourself into. So you can go for an even more targeted approach. You can list down the skills or the fields that you want to enhance. For example, if you want to strengthen your coding skills, go for the programs that have really good and rigorous coding courses. If you're pretty weak in statistics or mathematics, then go for the programs that offer a list of comprehensive courses to help you enhance your math and statistic knowledge. If you are already working and you are pretty satisfied with what you're doing right now, you just want to see if you're suitable for a quant finance career, then I would recommend doing the part-time program because you're not only working and making money, but you're also studying. Please keep in mind that attending any of those MFE programs doesn't guarantee you getting your dream offer or going into your dream company. So please do evaluate the risk and reward carefully. That's the end of today's video. I hope this video gave you more context on choosing the right MFE program for yourself. In case you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!